right, Mr. Alibro. Hello, Mr. Or, Steven. How yeah. are you? I'm doing great. Okay. Um, oof, I'm listening to you. I'm watching okay. what you guys, you massacred my boy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he didn't. He didn't bring very good takes, did he? Um, I don't know if his takes were good or bad, but I know that with four or five of you guys screaming over the whole time, it was uh. Okay, I'm not concerned about his comfort, but uh, what's up? What's on your mind? This um, is the only topic that I feel like I I can do off the cuff with you. So you got me. All right, we'll do it off the cuff. Do you really believe that it's insane to say that men, as an aggregate, are stronger than women? Uh, no, there were so many things to deal with. Here's here's the the sure. science on that. Okay, is that uh, the there is not even a full standard deviation in the difference between the, the is it mean or median? I don't math isn't my strong suit. Um, but uh, there is a small difference in the uh, the the center point uh, of uh, the strength uh, and overall physical ability of men and women. Do you genuinely uh, believe is, that? You think that there is a negligible difference between the average aggregate strength of men versus women? Uh, I would say it, it is quantifiable and statistically different, but uh, only barely statistically different. Uh, Why are women that... so scared of sexual encounters with men then? Since on an aggregate, it seems like generally they should be able to defend themselves against men. Like not... Because mm -hmm. as brought up in that discussion, uh, most sports are separated on weight classes. Once we account for oh, weight... Oh, no, I, I mean like in real life. I mean like why right. are women in real most life more women, afraid of men? Mm -hmm. Most women are shorter and smaller than most men. Okay, so shorter and smaller generally implies less strength as well. Yeah. Yes. If you want to talk about the, the full total population of them, uh, yes. When so when I say aggregate, sports... well, 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 so, I, I, so I very clearly, I'll say this again, I'm trying to get you. Sure. I very clearly said as an aggregate, men are stronger than women. That seems to be pretty non-debatable. Um, if you want, we can dig into powerlifting stats or we can look at any specific athletic event. Sure, um, say absolutely. For I, some track and field, yeah. So, like, for instance, like, in a, in a male NBA versus female NBA, it will be a slaughter. In male tennis versus female tennis, it has already been a slaughter. In male, sure. in almost any, okay. So, and then in the general yes. population, men as an aggregate are tend to be far stronger than women uh, on an aggregate. It's not just, like, a margin the of... extreme... Uh, the the extremity of uh, difference in both the bottom and end of the curve on male physical and mental ability, I do believe, is I need to fucking mute my alerts. One second. Christ, that was loud in my ear. Um, the edges of the bell curves, uh, there, there's a larger deviation from the mean uh, in the male population than there is in the female population. The curve for females is much tighter than it is for that of, uh, of men. Uh, but their, their raw physical ability, as I understand it, is relatively similar, but there is a statistical difference between the two. Okay, so I, I mean, so I know this from weightlifting because that's what I know best, but I'm 100% sure. positive that we can go to literally any sport ever, and my arguments will most likely hold true. But I'll, I'll use weightlifting um, because it's what I'm like yes. most familiar with. So, for instance, if I were to take because a one— Because of the—here, mm -hmm. uh, because of the extremes, the no, 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 hold on, hold end on. Up being I, I, way sure. better than the best I don't, that's not women. what I'm talking about, okay? Okay. And, and this, this point is very— fantastical okay it hurts your argument to even pretend because everybody knows that this is not true so let's 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 look at something like okay a bench press okay a 148 pound male with i think about one year of training would be expected to bench press about 230 pounds a 148 pound male with one to two years of training should probably be able to bench about 230 pounds a 148 pound female should be able to bench in the same amount of time about 135 pounds. That is not a slight difference in strength. That is a massive difference in strength. A man okay. who weighs 148 pounds with no training whatsoever can be expected to bench like 160 to 170, like p potentially. Um, I don't know if this class, this class four maybe isn't completely untrained, but I could look up like untrained numbers. And for sure. a woman at 148 pounds, it's it's almost so, half. Like it's significantly, it is sig there is significant one. differences between the power differences in groups of people, even in untrained or slightly trained groups of people. Sure. But number one, this wasn't my point. I didn't try to make this point in this argument. This was Mike's point. 
Uh, but number two, you would also probably be willing to contend uh, or concede rather uh, that lifting uh, raw muscle building power and ability is probably one of the things that men excel at faster than women in across physical prowess uh, altogether, right? No, that's just, this is one aspect of many. So men tend to have larger lungs. Men tend to have larger frames. Men tend to have greater bone mineral density. Um, I mean, like there are a whole, men tend to recover from exercise faster. Testosterone is a big player in your, in your sure. body's ability to recover. That one. Sure. So there are a multitude of advantages that men have when it comes to training for athletic events and participating in athletic events over women. It's not just your ability to put on muscle. There are sure. a great number of other physiological advantages as well right sure yeah okay so all of this yes. then so our original statement my original statement that men are stronger than women not by one standard deviation or whatever that means that significantly on and an aggregate and on average men are quite stronger than women that's true in an elite performance level or just on an average citizen level as well well, yes, if you are not controlling for their size, I will absolutely 100% give that Even to you. Even if you control for their size, men are going to be stronger. Women have to – there is no woman – there is no woman that cuts to 6% body fat. They can't do it. Women have to hold more fat in their body than men do. In fact, for women's – um, yeah. yeah, women's menstrual cycles or periods or um, – you, one of you guys jokingly alluded to it like it was ridiculous that like a woman's ovaries would fall out or whatever if she cut to too low of a body fat. But there are serious hormonal damages that happen to a woman's – that happens to a woman's body if she does cut to too low of a body fat. Body fat that men don't have to worry about. Now, men can cut to body fats that kill them too. Forty six percent is really fucking hard to hold. But um, but but like yeah, even even at the same weight, even at the same weight distribution, a man will still pound for pound be stronger than a woman because a man doesn't have to hold as much fat on his body as a woman does. Okay. Okay. So on an aggregate we should be able to agree and this fits as, as well with all the SJW narratives sure. or whatever you want to call it as well. Like yeah, women no, are I'm, scared I'm of men for a point. reason. Okay, sure. Okay. So this is something that that is true. So my so my understanding of it, of, of what I've seen, and, and I've and we've, I've done very little research tonight in terms of digging on, on subjects. Okay, I've just been tra kind of going through the links you guys have posted and then clicking something in the chat. My understanding of it is that um, if you allow somebody to train as a man for a significant period of time and then transition into um, a, a woman. Um, to, to transition like via hormone replacement therapy or something later on, that the amount of time spent training as, as a biological male will confer an advantage don't to them. don't use that phrase. As a cis male, I don't know what you'd call it. I don't know. Sure. What, I, it, uh, I, I'm uncomfortable saying male, that a trans uh, male. male birth, that would, but it, it's, okay. it's a trans medicalist term, and that's my major concern with it. Okay, got you. So somebody that was able to train in a body that was assigned male at birth for a significant portion of their life that is a trans individual that transitions to being um, a, a trans woman that uh, undergoes hormone replacement therapy to do it, that they have, have enjoyed the benefits of training in a assigned at birth male body for a, a long period of time. And it seems like that might confer some athletic advantage on them. Now I'm trying to find if there is data that says that all of these advantages are wiped out in a couple of years. It seems to me that things like your muscular, like your frame, the, the actual like skeletal frame you have, the size of your lungs, the bone mineral density you have, it seems to me like these are advantages that would carry through the amount of time spent training with elevated androgen levels and androgen sensitivity levels and, and elevated bone density, which helps you, you know, lift more weights. It seems like these advantages would still come through post hormone replacement therapy. Now you kept screaming at Lycan in the conversation, you know, the studies could be wrong, the studies could be wrong, the studies could be wrong. I'd be super curious in, in seeing some of these because nothing that was posted in, in Bad Bunny's chat had anything to do with any of these things. Okay, I've definitely seen a couple of them. I can uh, dig for a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't speak to lung capacity. I have no clue about that, but I do know uh, as far as I understand it and have read uh, all of the muscle benefits, uh, once you are on a uh, hormone regimen, uh, those completely evaporate within a certain amount of time. The amount of time is debated uh, so far. We don't know, you know, six months, two years or whatever that, that ends up being. Uh, but uh, yeah, let me see what I can find. Sure, and um, hopefully yeah. your chat has like a bunch of links ready or whatever if, if you guys have been discussing this a lot or whatever, but I, this is just something that it's pretty hard for me to find this. The general thing that I hear cited is that usually after the idea is that after two years, any advantages that you had in a, in a prior hormone state or whatever you would call it might disappear. But I, I, I would be very curious to see that like actually borne out like, like in, in some sort of study because I don't think I've seen that before.
Also, I'm much more favorable to the idea that a pre-puberty transition is going to put you on a much more, I don't like the term level playing field because I don't even know if that ever exists in, a, in any athletic event ever, but I, but I would say like a pre-puberty um, uh, transition is, is going to put you on a more quote unquote level playing field than a post-puberty transition because it seems like post-puberty, there's a lot of changes that your body goes through and advantages that you're probably gonna get that seem to me to be really hard to get rid of. And, and this is like obvious, like, you know, people go through surgeries well, no, to try to you, change. You but, know better than to say that things like this are obvious. Sure. So when I say seems obvious, what I mean is that other trans individuals have identified this. So for instance, when we talk about things like bone structure, a lot of trans people, po I don't like to say a lot, but there are trans people post transitioning that are unhappy, even after hormone replacement therapy with like the structure of their skeleton. They might feel like um, I'm experiencing sure. some how, dysmorphia because my shoulders are too broad or because the structure. How of my does face bone density impart physical prowess. So one of the adaptations, so your body goes through a lot of adaptations when you're lifting weights. Um, not only do your muscle fibers tear and repair themselves, um, not only do you have uh, CNS, central nervous system adaptations and recruiting muscle fibers, building, you also have your bones will actually thicken as, a, as an adaptation as a response to resistance training. So for instance, if you measure the bone mineral density of somebody that squats a lot, their spines will actually be thicker than somebody that doesn't. Your ability for your bones to become more dense as an, adi as an adaptation and response to weight Lifting not only allows you to lift heavier weights, but it protects you from future injury as well. Okay. Uh, I have no clue how that responds to hormone therapy. Well, you, your question was, how does bone mineral density confer an athletic sure. advantage? And the athletic advantage would be resistance to injuries and ability to lift more weights. And conditioning is generally a really important part of any athletic event. Sure. That, that might be true. I don't know. Okay. Um, and, and I don't uh, either. It is possible me that after on the fly to dig you up uh, links and trying to come at me with more stuff. Sure. I, well, so I'm not I, trying. I you just you asked the question. That's with that. the only reason I responded. But you guys were all four or five of you were screaming down like it today. And I'm just curious if there are actual like you guys screamed studies over and over and over again. And I'm I it's I haven't been able to find like conclusive stuff because uh, I love to argue trans issues, but I haven't been able to find this like silver bullet that's like, oh, look, like, bam, it's totally different. Like trans people, um, you know, post trans transition are 100% on the same, you know, if I can say biological playing field or hormone playing field or, or athletic advantage playing field as cisgender women. And I haven't been able to see that kind of stuff. Um, uh, Prene in my chat, what is this that you've linked me? This looks like it just talks about uh, female people in general and doesn't uh, cover trans athletes at all. Or if you want, because obviously I'm putting you on the spot here in, in terms of the data beam, um, you can poke me later, like tomorrow or the day after, and you can even sure. grab a couple other trans people and we can go over it. I'm not trying to like get you on this right now. Um, I just yeah, think no, it's, I... sure. I just think that sometimes like in our efforts to, um, in our efforts to be correct about certain positions, I think that sometimes we say some really ridiculous things. Um, I take a big issue with the idea that men and women on an aggregate are similar in strength because that runs like highly counterintuitive to some of the reasons why why women have such a difficult position in society when it comes to things like dating, right? Like I would never tell a woman, like, why are you scared of guys on Tinder? Like on average, you're gonna be about as strong as any guy you run into on Tinder when every woman knows that's not true. Like these types of relationships can be really scary meeting strange men and it's not because they're equal in strength, it's because there's usually like a huge power imbalance. Like that's one of the fears that women have when it comes to dating online. So it's a little strange to hear that while well, on aggregate, everybody's about the same strength. No, when we're talking about elite sports performance the best female performers and the best male performers uh don't end up being radically different in many different fields uh but w what we're talking about is the loss of performance when somebody transitions to being uh on female hormones which every study that i am familiar with shows that all advantage uh has been eliminated at that point because trans athletes are not performing at the same level that they were before and end up falling below the curve uh, compared to the same competitors that basically uh, 
got used to their own bodies. My guess is this is a puberty reaction where they're having to perform in a body they're only familiar with for the last couple of years, as per opposed to somebody who's intimately familiar with their own body, what they can do, etc. But the argument that we are usually having, you're talking about averages and on aggregate, but what we're talking about when we talk about sports performance is the absolute elite actors in each of these fields. So in the and elite actors, you would actually be so many more degrees wrong than in the aggregate even. Uh, right. Because in the but elite actors, there are no... Are wait, 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 you're just... Trans women sure, sure. outperforming cis women on the field. Sure, and that might be possible. That might be that that is the contention that we have right now. But the idea that in the elite level, men and women perform on similar similar levels is absolutely not true. It's not even remotely true. Like professional female teams will lose to college level athletes. Like it's it, for male athletes. Like there is a significant difference in the physiology between cis men and cis women. Um, it, it's it's just not even remotely close. Um, we, we don't have mixed martial arts like women and men fighting for a reason, even in the same weight class. Like we don't have a WNBA competing against a normal NBA. We don't do like American football. Like this is just not true. It, like everybody knows right, this isn't true it's not even remo remotely true our uh, when we're talking about trans female athletes outperforming cis females the data does not bear that out in having ever uh, really occurred there there is no trans takeover of sports and that's what we're talking about yeah Their but what we're asking ends up going to where a, a a cis female's performance is sure but that's that's what we're kind of asking the question about but but the the earlier question so there's two things here so the, the earlier statement that at an elite level men and women perform similarly is just absolutely not true now whether or not trans women are going to quote unquote take over um you know female uh, cis female a athletic events is something to be determined or something to be looking into that's the issue that, that there is contention right now however just because trans women haven't done it yet doesn't necessarily mean they're failing to do so due to physiological reasons there could be other barriers that prevent trans women from succeeding in sports like the massive amount of discrimination that they face in other parts of their life. It could be that there are trans women that could incredibly outcompete um, cisgender women in, in sports, but they're just being discriminated at other levels. It's preventing them from making it through. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's like a potential hypothesis. And right. This is what we would need data to that support. That sounds like we're, we're trying to reach for reasons that are otherwise indicated. Nope, I'm not reaching any harder than you are. And, and right now, all of the indications indicate that there is a significant advantage to training in a more androgen-sensitive, testosterone-producing body, which it tends to be assigned male at birth, versus a body that produces less testosterone and has less androgen sensitivity, which tends to be a female-assigned at birth body, right? Mm -hmm. So... We make the assumptions that it seems to make sense, but the results have not borne that out. Wait, which results? The results of trans athletes are not outperforming their cis counterparts when transitioning to female. Yeah, but the, but the issue I'm saying here is there might be other barriers to yeah, trans... Yeah, there might be other issues, but trans we're rights. talking about... Uh, we're talking about the best performers. We're talking about it happening frequently enough for there to be a population to be able to reasonably say these athletes are not outperforming their cis female that's counterparts. The, no, no, that's not the question right now. The question isn't, are trans people currently outperforming cisgender people? We can look at the top, the top scores or the top whatever in anything and determine that's probably not true. That doesn't seem to be the case. The question is whether or not um, a trans woman will have a biological advantage over a cis woman like a significant majority of the time that's the question and we can't determine that by just looking at who are the current like top performers well, because it's possible that trans women are discouraged from getting there due to other pressures before they even get to that level that might be the question that you are asking in potential good faith but it is not the question that's being asked the question that's being asked is, should we be letting men compete in women's sports? Sure, which is kind, of, which I guess is a more transphobic way of getting at the same question that I'm asking, which is, does a, mm. does a trans woman have a significant biological advantage over a cisgender woman? That's, that's the question, like biologically speaking, is, is what we're asking. And that seems right. to and be as of yet determined. What we're asking is, should these people be treated as less than human no that's uh, n no 
that's our contention. Yes, they should not be. Well, so they should be allowed to compete in whatever category we're forcing them to compete in. Okay. So that's a different argument, and there are interesting right. arguments to have here. So one problem that trans people expose about how we differentiate athletic divisions is that at the end of the day, we like to believe it's a meritocracy, but it's actually incredibly arbitrary. Um, right. Even when it comes down to what we call a woman as a woman uh, on like a very fine biological basis, there are ways that this branch off in ways that most people don't even know, right? We presented right. in a highly simplified way in high school. Um, or, or like if we wanted to draw a distinction between men and women, you know, we also draw a distinction. We, we could draw a distinction between different height classes in the NBA, but we don't do that. Why? Why is that any more or less fair than drawing distinctions between cis men and trans women or whatever? Um, but 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 that's besides the point. That's a totally separate argument on can any athletic event be merit based at all? Right. Or are there some biological advantages that are like so huge that we should take account it for them or we shouldn't or whatever? But that's that's a totally separate thing than just saying we should be able to just ham fist trans people into their respective cis categories and everything should be OK. I think that question is still unanswered. And right now, if theoretically we removed all the discriminatory barriers against trans people from competing with cis people, if trans people started to dominate every single one of those categories, well, we would have to start to ask questions like, okay, well, fuck, like, did we fuck up here? Is this a mistake? Do we want this? Like, and, and the alternative doesn't work either because we don't want to make just trans categories because then it's like, oh, well, if you're a trans athlete, well, now you are fucked. You never get to compete with like the, the real large professional events that are probably all going to be cisgender. So it's, it's a hard question. I, I just don't think it's fair to present it as though there's an easy solution. I, right, but that's... That's not what the trans community is is trying to, to argue. They just want to be allowed to compete in sports, and people are telling them that they have to compete here as opposed to somewhere else. There, There's a, a red, like, let's go to some stupid example that doesn't prove anything, but it does prove how stupid the systems are arbitrary. Uh, there is a, uh, there is a uh, trans man mm -hmm. uh, who is uh, being forced to compete as his assigned at birth sex female uh, in high school competitions in wrestling in Texas recently. Uh, and he is completely, absolutely crushing heads across the board. He hates that he is being forced to wrestle women because he has been taking testosterone injections and it is not fair to those competitors that he is absolutely destroying them at the complete state level. It's, it's this binary fucking obsession that America specifically has, but the world at large also <clears throat> worries about sure. that we need to get the fuck over and come up with a solution that's fair to allow people to do the things that are important for them to feel like being able to be a human being the way that they want to. Yeah, and I understand that, but like, let if we, if we were to flip the script though, and let's say that you had women that wanted to compete in cisgender sports, but the the top end ends up becoming dominated by trans women. I mean, like those people end up feeling that they're basically being fucked athletically as well. No. Well, given that they have a huge amount more privilege than trans individuals, and trans individuals have been excluded from these things historically. Uh, that is a problem that I say we solve once we find out how it shakes out. So, All we want right now is equal treatment. Uh, I don't, I, I feel like in athletic events, I feel like that's, that, that people aren't generally like, you're, you're basically making an affirmative action for professional athletics. Uh, I don't, I don't know if most people would be comfortable with that argument. I mean, that's an argument you could make. It's interesting. Um, the idea would be that if we could even artificially push trans people to certain levels of competitiveness, that it would encourage other trans people to get into it, and then you'd replace affirmative action with organic growth. Um, but this sidesteps the whole issue that there might be a massive biological advantage that's conferred onto a, a, a trans woman. Um, and, and then how would you even start to sort this out later on? Like, I, I don't, I don't think most people would well, be okay with that. I, mean, I think that'd be really difficult to deal with. And I don't think like, down, though, yeah, go for too, it. Yes. You, you, are you familiar with how sex is categorized? Um, like in biologically, what as you keep putting it? Um, biologically? In what sense? It depends on what you mean. Right. In what sense? How, how are we categorizing right now? We're lumping people together into male and female for sports competitions right now. Mm -hmm. How is that fair to the people who end up having XXY chromosomes and uh, are competing against other men? 
uh, on the field? How is it fair to intersex individuals at all to be forced to be co competing against either of these individuals? Yeah, I, I don't disagree with any of this, but this to is a totally X different individuals that express with a penis that they have to be able to compete with male individuals. The problem is the arbitrary sexual categorization of individuals based on their genitalia almost exclusively when it's more about the hormone balance that is undertaken in their bodies. Uh, the fact that human bodies themselves are chimeric, me as a, a sexed male individual at birth, I have no fucking clue what my chromosomal makeup is. I could be 90% XX and we wouldn't know because we don't do the genetic testing at birth to find that information out. We don't know how fair it is because we just look at somebody and we're like, dick, no dick. And then we decide, lump them into these categories. Those people I, okay. are already I don't disagree. not competing in a yeah. fair category. I don't disagree with any of this. You're, 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 right? like, you're talking to somebody that is like a gender abolitionist. Sure. Okay. I, I don't disagree with any of this. More than My audience else, already right? knows how I feel about all of this. I talk about this all the time, okay? If you sure. want to tell me that all but gender categories should how be... How fair is it? To the men who have a genetic disadvantage that they have to compete with the men that have the genetic advantage. It's probably not that fair, but I don't right. disagree with so you. So why don't we get wait, 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 wait. rid of those sorts of arbitrary categorizations and let the excellent people compete with the excellent people and go from there? Well, let people because be we, we have let to have, no, 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 we can't just, the shit that no. makes them feel like we they're can't alive. just let people do things. We have to have some type of categorization in order to make these athletic events work. Why? Because if we don't, then every single athletic contender is going to be male. Every, then females just don't get to compete in sports anymore. Nobody's going to watch them. Nobody's going to want to do anything. I, I disagree that that would be the case. That's fine that you disagree. Women but are physically better at certain things than I think men are. it's possible the they might, they might be the superior. No, no, no. That's that not true. Right now Wait. is because we have picked the things that men are best at to compete at physically. Okay. Th so I think there might be one form of distance running. I think that women might be superior than men. I think, or, or, or maybe gymnastics, like the the two bar or whatever. There are some things that women might be better, but for the vast majority of sports, men insanely outclass right. women. And in the vast majority of sports that we have performed since the beginning of time, only valuing men as athletic performers, they outperform women. Yes, but your that argument is, is that there might be there might why be like, that would occur. Yeah, but your argument is that we might be able to invent some new athletic event that women are superior to men in. Like this whole argument relies no, on the invention of another sport. Is that we have an arbitrary value over the sports performance of certain people doing certain arbit like there's so many abstract layers of uh, arbitrary preference in this that why does it matter in the least how fair things are in these sorts of competitions i i'm, I'm, I'm gonna take the take that you're gonna fucking hate at this point uh if we just allowed people to compete for fun uh, and removed the, the capitalist incentive behind these sorts of competitions, we wouldn't need to have this discussion. So when the Greeks did, like, athletics, was that, like, pre-capitalism, like, bubbling up to the surface? Or, like, athletic competition has been, like, part of, like, humanity yeah. since probably the, the dawn of mankind. Women were treated as full fucking humans when the Greeks had the Olympics. Well, you're ignoring my point. You're trying to say that, like, athletic drives, the no, drive to I'm do things... I'm saying that they were not allowed to compete. But they were not seen men as competed. that were capable the, of the doing. Olympics, yeah, men competed. Right? So, so men yeah. competed in the Olympics before they capitalism. Did. Getting rid of capitalism isn't going to get rid of athletic competition. Right. Getting rid of patriarchal arbitrary nonsense saying that only the things that men are good at are the things that we should value and allow to happen uh, is the problem that has occurred. We're talking about an entire human race's existence of preferring what men are capable of doing and finding out what men are best at doing men things. Sure, and I don't necessarily saying that women have to compete in the same exact things and and it's just it's i don't necessarily numbing. disagree that the selection of what we consider to be athletic events is going to be biased towards what men are already good at because society seems to be ran by male interests right if we if we go into patriarchy theory which i generally agree with however right. 
the dismantling of the entire patriarchy, and then we don't even know if there are athletic events that could be invented that women are superior at to men. Like, uh, like this, this is like such an out there argument that it's. I don't even think it's worth considering when trans people today need to consider like what is, or, or when we all need to consider what are the places of trans people in sports today. Like the answer to that question can be well, once we dismantle patriarchy and capitalism, we'll be able to answer that. Like we need right. answers before that. But you were talking about. What about in the future? Because right now they're not outperforming their cis female counterparts. You wanted to talk about the future, so I wanted to talk about the future. Right now, trans femme performance in elite sports is not a problem. Okay. So are we talking about the future or are we not? I'm sorry. When I was future? talking about the future, I mean like the, the next like five to 10 years, I, not 250 years into the future when capitalism right, and patriarchy have been abolished. You also were conjecturing. You were saying maybe we end up seeing them outperforming. We haven't yet. We have no reason to believe that they will. Well, so no, so if we, we're going to talk about the future, we may as well talk about well, no, the no, so, future. That my, allows them to perform as the people that they are. So my point is that biomechanically, we have every reason to believe that they would con they would outperform their cis counterparts. Like that seems to be the case biomechanically. Well, That's to but be. But we're really bad at science in general. We mm, we don't. We're, we, we're pretty so good bad at, at understanding how the body does a lot of the shit that it does. We're only okay. barely sure. beginning so to understand dietary This is science a miss this is kind of a misunderstanding of how like medicine in general or, or understanding biological processes work. Um just because we don't understand how a process works doesn't mean we can't speak about the effects of a certain process. Sure. So like this same argument that you're giving I could use to say like well we shouldn't give SSRIs to people because we don't know fuck all about how the brain works and we have a very poor understanding of how neurochemical works, about how serotonin or dopamine works we just know that there are certain drugs it seems like when you give it to people it seems like it generally right. helps their mood okay but just because we don't know how it works doesn't mean we can't make broad statements like it's actually really hard to even describe the process of building muscle that's a very very hard i don't know if i don't even know if medical scientists can fully understand and describe that process all the way down to like a fundamental like uh cellular level like from start to finish i don't think that's like fully been described yet um but we still know how to build muscle Right. We still know what muscle does. We, we still know like there are good ways well, to build it and bad ways to build it. So we can make the same statements take, about. Sure. Yeah. So we can still make the same statements about trans people. Like we might not know the underlying like biomechanical explanation or description of every single hormone in the body or whatever. But we can still make some broad statements. People that produce a lot of androgen and have androgen sensitivity are going to be more athletic than people that produce less androgen and have lower androgen sensitivity. Right. That's and that's so extreme that, as you correctly mentioned earlier, you can have people with X, Y, chromosomes chromosomes who are actually presented completely most people think they're women um or, or most people would call them like cis women even though they have an xy chromosome because they have no androgen sensitivity at all um so yeah i mean like there are statements that we can make about like how things work even if we don't understand the underpinnings of how every single part of it works sure so let's go ahead and uh take a hard turn over this one because i don't think we're getting anywhere here and i you know a lot more about some, this shit than i do uh, let's talk about Castor Semenya for a minute. Um, You're roughly sure. familiar with her? Um, my understanding of that, um, and I'm worried that I have read wrong stuff, but my understanding is that she is a cis woman that just produces and has much higher androgen sensitivity than most like cis women. And so people were talking about barring her from competition um, as a result uh, of Has that. been barred from competition unless she undergoes hormone therapy to mm -hmm. change her body. Yeah. Uh, why is she a magical exception all of a sudden? Uh, partially, I'm going to give you the answer here is because she's black. Okay. Uh, I'm just saying, why isn't she allowed to compete? She's a cis woman. Why are we telling her that her body is wrong? Why isn't she allowed to do everything that the art, the side that you're trying to argue right now? Why, why isn't she allowed to take her human exceptionalism and compete fairly against other women? Um... Until we answer that question... So the uh, answer to that know. question is very simple. The answer to the question is that differentiating um, differentiating competitive athletic sports only by a very crude understanding of biological sex is probably not a good way to separate um, divisions in athletic events. It's, that's the answer, right? Sure. Okay. But So let's stop using that system. 
Yeah, but the only thing is, is that if you're going to say we have to stop using that system, you're, you're going to have to admit that we can't just let everybody do whatever because then women are going to have no, or cis women or trans women are probably going to have almost no representation in athletic events everywhere. So we, we, we need to figure out something, and it's hard, um, especially, and it's probably good even that, that trans people are, are making us think about these things more because even if we got rid of all the trans people somehow, if we waved the magic conservative wand, these are still probably good questions to think about, right? Are sports done on a meritocracy basis? You guys correctly identified Michael Phelps, for instance, has a body that physiologically makes him far more adept at swimming than a, a, another type of cis male. Do we divide for those types of bodies? Like, these are good questions to ask. Um, I don't disagree. I ask these questions all the time. They're very interesting to think about. But that that still means that if you're if you're advocating for trans people in sports, the answer is probably going to be more complicated than just saying trans people should be able to compete in the same categories as cis people. No questions asked. It's, the, the solution is probably not going to be that simple. I I don't know what to say about that. I if we allowed trans people to live the lives that they wanted to in the first place and allowed them to uh, to transition at the ages that they identified themselves and didn't have society completely judging everything that they did, this would be a non-issue. Um, possibly. I mean, like things like puberty blockers and letting has, you... Being, yeah, it, being it, able to transition before puberty is really good, sure. Yeah. The, the entire issue. I, I've linked you a couple of videos, by the way. They should be of the same video series. Uh, that is argued by a person that is much more educated on this subject than I am. Uh, the, it's something of thought. I've fucking lost it already. My chat keeps trying to feed me information. I'm only barely able to skim uh, over any of it. Okay. Uh, but uh, I'm being told that it addresses every single point that you're bringing up. Essence of Thought is the, the name of the YouTuber. Gotcha. All right, I'll look into, um, I will, I'll look into these later just because these are interesting things to me, and I appreciate the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I am sorry that uh, I am not as smart as you. But, no, that's, uh, not, that's not what this is about. <laughs> I just wanted to ask some questions because you guys massacred my boy, and so I just wanted to come up. Why, and... why is he your boy? Do you, let, let's talk about uh, also uh, my contention that uh, enacting transphobia makes you transphobic. Uh, would you agree with that statement? Um, No, I don't think so. I don't think I would agree with that statement. Okay then we're going to go ahead and part ways here then. Okay. Have a good night, Steven. Have a good one. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we tried. Uh, the, the numbers I was pulling before, fuck. I don't know what chart this was using. Or, or fuck, whatever one. The first one I pulled for, like, novice lifters, those numbers were way too high. I'm sorry. Uh, these are probably closer numbers to novice lifters. Um, there, there are, like, there are charts you can pull up online if you want to track, like, your progress. Like, okay, well, if I'm a novice lifter and I weigh this much body weight, like, how much should I be able to lift to kind of, like, have an understanding of, like, you know, where should my lifts be at? Like, am I making okay progress? And you can see, like, the difference in weight lifted at, like, a given body weight for, like, a man and a woman is significantly different at every level of training, right? Like, but, okay, sorry, that was just saying. <clears throat> the study conclusion talks about male versus female tendons. They are very different. Do hormones fix this along with muscle strength? Well, yeah, that's the question. I know that you know, a lot of you guys are linking me studies that show the difference between cis men and cis women. I know that there are differences um, in that. My question, the question is whether or not hormone replacement therapy like makes those differences disappear. That's the question, right? This is, dude, you stop saying that when you talked with your friend before coming on here about talking about this. Why are you so performative? Because Do you believe I in have, anything?